mental illness my dear students at some point we need to stop fighting mental illness you see medication therapy and coping strategies only work when we are accepting and embracing of our issues you see acceptance acceptance of our true identity acceptance of who we truly are is the first step towards mindfulness it is the first step towards becoming more mindful in life and after all that is what meditation teaches us to become more mindful so acceptance of our true identity acceptance of what we are going through is the very first step that all of us can take towards becoming more mindful in life this is a basic concept called mindfulness a non judging acceptance of who we are applying this mindfulness to mental issues like anxiety depression panic attacks and uh, obsessive compulsive disorder or ocd as we call it allows us to stop fighting it and start thriving so here's a short video which i would like to share with all of you on this children's day i'm going to be sharing the story of my life so far and i just hope from the bottom of my heart that this story of mine is going to be able to help some of you out there i love you all students take a look it was recess time at my school and the kids in my 4th grade class really ran outside and i lagged behind dreading the required daily lap around the dirt track arriving at the track i felt my chest tighten i took one step onto the track and immediately became suffocated i was suffocating with anxiety i repeated the step trying to place my foot perfectly flat and firm on the ground avoiding any cracks or any rocks each step for me needed to be perfect i couldn't take the next step until in my mind i felt completely satisfied with the previous step i repeated this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times it was a painfully slow process i knew i didn't have to perform these repetitions but my mind forced me to i was only half way around the track when the bell rang and suddenly recess was over and i was stuck on the track and i broke down crying Shortly afterwards I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD meaning that I had constant mental obsessions and performed physical routines repeatedly I would wash my hands for hours repeatedly with repeated movements around every corner and every crevice of my fingers unwanted thoughts would strike my mind repeatedly and i would reread and rewrite the same sentence over and over again so that i could never finish my school work on time sometimes why because i just wanted my work to be perfect or more than perfect ocd my dear students is a vicious cycle and many students suffer from it however not many decide to talk about it ocd is a vicious cycle 
and that day in my school on the race track was my breaking point i realized i couldn't function in everyday life like this so in that moment my parents and i decided to seek some help with with the response that i got it was more therapy more medication and throughout the years i was only managing my symptoms my ocd remained ever present and people always told me to calm down or to just chill and relax but when had i have been taught the skills to manage these emotions never entering high school i was labeled an at risk student due to my severe anxiety and ocd issues the transition from middle school to high school was scary i became burdened with school work in the social environment i felt foreign and so i was labeled as an introvert i was always focused on my studies 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 rewriting rereading repeating revising re-revising until i scored a perfect 100 on 100 on almost every subject that i studied in school i always made sure that i was the top ranker in my class i was the one who always won the gold medal for studies i was the one who was the scholarship holder throughout my school and also throughout my college because i was always always obsessed with an urgent need an urgent urge to have a control over everything that i did to have a control and to be perfect at everything that i did i never had a chance for social and emotional learning or bonding which could probably help aid my transition into high school of course my high school provided a small sense of community because i did have some good friends around me it provided me with a small sense of community inside a large convent school that i studied in my school told me how to make a good first impression my school taught me excellent communication skills my school taught me how to be presentable and confident at all times but despite all that despite having great teachers around me and a support system around me despite having loving parents who tried to do whatever it takes to keep me happy my ocd still continued to grow and i was never really able to treat it by myself and how could i after all i needed help i needed some kind of professional help somebody to guide me out of it isn't it and so i continued throughout my high school with an impressive mark sheet i was collaborating with friends on different projects i was effective in my studies in studying hard i was always organized with my planner and i was really very good at diffusing my emotions like anxiety and anger through listening to music music was my therapy back then the unique part about my high school the unique part about my classes was that they weren't boring i remember my favorite lesson called mindfulness where our teacher used to combine yoga with meditation and learning how to belly breathe or breathe from the belly our teacher used to teach us about uh, positive self talk and self affirmations and simply accepting our feelings and emotions rather than acting on them or fighting them rather than fighting them so that was a good time since my freshman year in college i have been practicing mindfulness every day for at least 
10 to 15 minutes because I realized that mindfulness really helped me to calm down and really helped me to see the whole picture with the right perspective. Mindfulness really taught me about who I was, what my true identity was and how my true identity was attached to the whole universe in terms of its vastness, both in terms of its time and space. Mindfulness and meditation taught me my true identity along with teaching me how my true identity was attached to the whole universe in terms of its time and space. So since college, I have been practicing meditation for 10 to 15 minutes every day. And believe it or not, the track, the track that I always followed in school, the track where I was always obsessed about keeping one foot in front of the other in perfect alignment, I kind of started to forget about that track slowly and slowly over a period of time. So I was a very anxious child at school, but by the time I reached college, I was not so anxious anymore. And now, as I talk to you today, I have my daily workout routine, I have my mindfulness meditation routines which allow me to discover the true nature of my own self, my true identity. I have been a runner always. I am a long distance runner and I have always loved running. And the pain and the endurance which is involved in running forces me to be present and I derive great satisfaction from this. I learned to be in control of my actions instead of obsessing over trivial thoughts and rituals. Every run was like a little battle against my OCD and every day after my run, I knew that I had won that small battle. I learned that this kind of social and emotional development is inexplicably linked to academic and future success also and understanding this connection is very important understanding this connection has really helped me and other students around me to excel in their studies So, as a senior in college, I helped to teach the same mindfulness meditation techniques to my juniors. I decided to help, help all the freshmen students at my college. I decided to help them manage their emotions, their relationships and their goals in life. And because of my experience, because of my own experience with my own anxiety, I also served as a panelist and as an advisor on a two-year project on social and emotional development with my university where I studied. Hopefully one day, hopefully one day, I will be able to achieve my goal of implementing a program where youngsters, school-going students and college-going students can be given a practical plan, can be given a plan which they can follow on a day-to-day -day basis to overcome their anxiety and uh, different types of anxieties or different forms which anxiety can take sometimes like OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder or panic attacks or panic disorders that's my plan for the future so you guys have all probably heard the saying that we want to prepare our kids to be the leaders of tomorrow well one of the most impactful statements that i've heard 
at my university is this our kids are the leaders of today and that we better start treating them like that so by the end of my senior year in college by the end of my senior year i felt like i was one of those leaders and i've conquered my ocd and anxiety and it was a thing of the past but when i got to the last year of my college the first few days at amity were the worst days of my life that same suffocating anxiety came back that same suffocation in my chest that same sensation of breathlessness not being able to breathe fully that sensation came back i would wake up each morning with severe anxiety attacks uh not really anxiety attacks let me be very accurate about this scientifically i would wake up every morning with severe anxiety and sometimes i would wake up with terrible panic attacks and panic attacks are nothing but a more severe form of anxiety and on the third day of my college it became too much i remember sitting on my bed trying to meditate trying to calm myself down but my meditation turned into rumination and i burst into tears crying and crying because there was no reason why my anxiety manifested in that moment and there was no need for my anxiety to manifest at that time but children that's how anxiety works all i knew is that i couldn't do it anymore and what made it worse was that i sounded ungrateful i was one of the best students i was a scholarship holder i was studying at one of the best universities in noida yet i was miserable i was considering dropping out of amity or just taking a gap year because i did not know how i was going to survive the last semester let alone the rest of my life so i went to my proctor's room and i told him about my anxiety i told him i was not okay i told him the same story that i have been telling all of you now through this video and now i just met him in his cabin and i was uncomfortable of course but nevertheless i was telling him this entire story of mine i wasn't at home anymore i was away from my parents so my proctor took me to the emergency care to receive some counseling and later that day i told my friends i told some of my teammates and some of my coaches about what was going on inside my mind telling people took a huge burden off me and i could finally accept and embrace my ocd and immediately these emotions began to dissipate and over the next couple of days and weeks i began to find my new home here at amity and i wouldn't trade it for the world i was happy i had always been trying to conquer my ocd always trying to fight it always trying to win over it always trying to just kill it what meditation did what meditation did to me was teach me about my true identity but i was still trying to fight and suppress my anxiety and so therapy taught me that the first step to treating anxiety and ocd was acceptance pure acceptance pure acceptance of who you are and what you are dealing with i always ended up asking myself why am i like this why is this happening to me see you can have all the coping strategies in the world you can have all your achievements in your pocket but mental illness can still punch you in the face it does not discriminate between a girl and a boy it does not discriminate between the rich and the poor that day at amity when my anxiety became too much the solution was not to sit down and formally meditate it was to go to my proctor and tell him what i was feeling and through that 
I was practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness meditation does not have to be a CD practice, does not have to be just a video or a YouTube practice. It is simply about accepting and being in the present moment and you can tap into this at any point of your day. So I wanted to tell this to all of you. I wanted to to tell all of you that through mindfulness meditation, through meditation exercises, through workouts and belly breathing, you can manage your anxiety and your OCD on a day-to-day basis. But remember that the first step to mindfulness meditation is acceptance. Acceptance of who you are. Acceptance of what you are going through, my dear students. Acceptance is the key. Now, I want to teach you an activity today through this video. I want to teach you an activity which you can practice anytime during the day and which can really help you to become more mindful and which can really enable you to accept yourself for who you are. I want to help orient all of you for the beginning of a lesson so everyone could sit up straight, your feet flat on the floor, your hands can be at your sides or on your lap and you can just gently close your eyes or leave them softly open. Now I want you to notice your breathing. Don't try to change your breath, just simply notice your breath. It could be shallow or it could be deep. It may be all the way into your chest or it could be right into your belly. Simply notice and accept your breathing as it is without fretting about it or without worrying about it. Now, in these moments of silence, our mind often wanders. We constantly think and worry. But the best anchor, the best anchor that you can have right now, the best anchor to bring you back to the present moment would be your breath. And you experience thoughts? That's absolutely fine, children. Whenever you experience thoughts, simply take a casual note of them and then let them come and let them go with each breath that you take. Notice the clothing against your skin, your butt in the seat, your feet on the floor. Try to envelope your whole body and breath as if your whole body is taking an in-breath and your whole body is taking an out-breath. Now gently open your eyes and ease yourself out of this practice. So there's an example of a mindfulness minute and I understand that formal meditation isn't for everyone. And if that's you, here's another activity that all of you can apply to your daily routines, students. So I'm going to assume that everyone here brushes their teeth when they wake up in the morning, right? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So when you brush your teeth, What are you thinking about? I usually think about how I slept last night or what I have planned for the day or maybe I'm doing multiple things at once while I'm brushing my teeth. You see, even in life's most basic activities, our thoughts are elsewhere. We constantly think and worry and plan ahead and we are never fully in the present moment. Well, next time you brush your teeth, I challenge you to notice the little things. What are the bristles feeling like as they rub against your teeth and your gums? What does the toothpaste taste like? Is it minty or uh, is it slightly salty or is it more sweet? What does it actually feel like to have clean teeth once you have brushed them properly? 
If your mind starts to wander from this activity of brushing, ask yourself these questions. They will allow you to stay focused and engaged in this activity of brushing. And just doing this for two minutes every day will allow you to become more mindful and aware throughout your day, students. So I want to end by saying that taking a mindfulness approach to mental illness is not an immediate cure, but embracing mental illness as a part of your true identity will allow you to communicate with others and give you space to use some effective coping strategies. Strategies like exercise, belly breathing, and exposure to other people who are going through the same journey as yours. And then these coping strategies will only work when you are accepting of your condition and not repressing or fighting your condition. I have OCD. I have anxiety. I still try to manage my OCD and anxiety every day. I go through panic attacks every once in a while, but I am still managing them. Life is good. It's a part of who I am and I will probably have it for the rest of my life. And I am okay with that. Thank you. Wishing all of you a very happy Children's Day and may God bless all my students.